Good morning, folks. I'm up just a little bit early. I managed to get a little bit of sleep last night. Um, this is my 70th show. Remember the 70 elders mentioned in the Bible? 70s mentioned many times. The Septuagint. 70s mentioned in the future as well. So here we have show number 70 for me. You hear the dog in the background. I, uh, she got one of her bones and she went into her kennel. So she loves her kennel. I guess it makes her feel cozy. And of course, being the type of animal she is and the way they breed these things and the way they start them off, she probably start off in the kennel. She's real happy in it. I just assume get rid of it. But it's her safety zone. If I ask her if she wants a treat, she'll go up to into her kennel. It's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take it in here. I'm gonna get it. And I guess it's, you know, I can't get me kind of you can't get me kind of an area. Which reminds me of my youngest niece. When I would visit, she had no one to play with. And I was known by my middle name in the family, so. And of course, being a child of about three or four, saying the letter L, pronouncing it, enunciating it properly, it's not, not easy, you know, for a child. Can't catch me, Uncle Taylor. And, you know, I go over and I just felt for the child because even though she's in a beautiful house, you know, they were in a new house in a really nice neighborhood in South Anchorage. Uh, wow. She was by herself. And my sister did not want to have another child. I thought, man, she needs a brother or a sister. No, she wasn't going to do it. It was too painful. Okay. I'm not bearing children. I know. She didn't want another child, but my God, she was such a joy. And she really would have benefited by having a brother or sister to play with. Um, cause I'd go over and she immediately would want me to chase her and they had wood floors, nice, smooth wood floors. And I, you know, and in the winter time, especially, you know, you take your shoes off when you're in the house. It's Alaska. You got slop on your feet. She'd take off and I'll be darned if she being so small, she could turn on a dime. Right. And I'd be sliding felt like miles, you know, I just kept going, ah, heck, it was a good time, it was funny as could be, and, uh, you bet, she wanted me to chase her, so I did, ah, uh, so I think that when the dog goes in her kennel, it might be one of those, you can't catch me moments, and, um, if she's got her treat, she doesn't want to be bothered, she doesn't want to give it up, she doesn't want to share it, she'll take it in there, same with the ball occasionally. She'll take it in there. It's like, and sometimes I'll call her because I'm taking off. I use the training collar on her too much probably. But she was so powerful. She was pulling me on my face. It was so bad. I was thinking I had to get rid of her. And my buddy, whose rear dog's more expensive, I mean, more, more experienced than I have. So back when they were doing Dobermans, this is what they use. And it's like, Okay, so I spent the money on, and I got the best one I could. It was not cheap, and I got the right size. I took my time doing my research. And then I had to get put the right number of prongs in the collar. And uh, I think I got it right. She's quite a dog, and I don't want her sleeping in that. And they tell you to only use that collar when you're training. But there's been times when I just have to use it to keep a handle on her through the day. And I'm not I'm not getting her out in public enough. I know that. And we've been up in the mountains too much. So she's a tad more protective than what I want, than what she needs to be. A little bit more wound up. I wonder if I'm a little bit more wound up now that I think about it. I mean, seriously. 
folks, this new product that I'm going to get, I just can't wait till it gets delivered. I function so much better with it. I mean, look, it works for me. It might not work for you. <clears throat> but I bet it does. I bet it does to the point where I'm going to be selling a lot of it. Especially to, well, I don't know what my audience consists of. There was one time I looked at, there were some demographics, and I was pulling for young men in their t 20s. And I'm like thinking, what? That generation's paying attention to me? Way cool. Why way cool? Look, you youngsters got the energy. You've got the senses. You've got your sharpness. You've got it going on. Especially if you're about 20 years old because you haven't even grown up yet. You haven't matured yet. And I know if you're a 20-year-old man hearing my voice, you're struggling going, oh my God, when am I ever going to get there? I mean, I'm, you know you aren't grown up. You, you know you aren't fully developed. Your body's still growing and developing. And I got news for you. So is your brain. Everything, as a matter of fact, is developing and growing in you. And I just, I know that if you're a 20-year-old, you're not going to want to hear this. But you need to know something. Well, maybe you are going to want to hear this. The frontal lobes, okay, or no, no, it's the temporal lobes. Keep growing. Guess how old before they actually stop growing? Well, technically, they do keep going because you keep replacing neurons, you keep generating, you keep losing neurons. But the real nice thing, frontal lobes keep growing into your 30s. So you might not be fully physically formed until you're 36. Now, I know that sounds like, my God, that's a long time. I'm never going to be mature. I'm never going to grow up. Don't worry. It comes. Uh, the other thing is you lose neurons. You peel them off real fast when you're a child. Why? Because you don't use them. And I think you lose them. But the other thing is it's the way it's supposed to be. If you don't lose it, you lose it. If you don't use it, you lose it. And the thing is that there are two conditions under which you grow neurons, brain cells, nerve cells. And uh, one of them's a real blessing for a man. More of a blessing for a man than for a woman, by the way. That's intense exercise. That's right. You use this body, you use your body, you use your striated muscles, you know, the voluntary muscles that we control, right? <clears throat> and by the way, the heart is a combination of striated and smooth muscle. Slows, so is the muscle in the esophagus. It's a combination of smooth muscle and voluntary muscle. And the thing is that <clears throat> you don't have conscious control of that smooth muscle. Unless you do a little yoga, then you can develop some control over that. And that's why swallowing is so important and it's so hard because it's kind of hard to learn because you can't exactly exercise some parts of it. And your heart muscle. You can't exactly exercise some parts of it, but if you're doing meditation, you can do it. Breath control, for sure. That was the secret of why I could do those super, super exercise, super sessions, sets of exercise that the other guys my age would go, what the heck? And even my trainer, when he puts 60, 600 pounds on the leg press and says, watch this, I did the 10 reps and said, you, you want more? <laughs> you put your breath into it. Now, I got some bad news for you. The evil ones know this as well. They can monitor you because they've got the uh, they've got the ability to do it. As a matter of fact, uh, some of these other species that, that walk among us, they got the ability to detect your aura and other parts of you, and your that's your electromagnetic field. That's the field that surrounds you and expands from your body. And if you think it doesn't exist, then go look at the old castles over in England. How big are the halls? How big are the entranceways? 
They're that size for a reason. Could have been that big for physical giants and giant animals, who knows? But what about a little guy with a massively powerful aura that extends several feet from his body? It's possible that a man might be able to extend his aura miles. As we talk, it comes to my mind. Look, folks, we live in an incredible age. And when I discovered what a sociopath was the hard way, I'm trying to love one, actually, to be honest with you. It's, it's embarrassing as hell. You would think, you're a psychologist. Come on, man. You know these things. You, they can't pull the wool over your eyes. Oh, hell. It might be because of my training, I'm an easy target. Because I'm an empath. They, they run circles around me and manipulate the hell out of me. That's the problem. Most of you people out there think you know what a sociopath is. It takes years of experience and, and you don't want those, that experience. You don't want that kind of a life. You don't want to be running into that kind of a people. But you need to also know that we're dealing with a sociopathic culture. That's right. We're dealing with a subset of people on the planet who are sociopathic by nature. And not only that, their leadership makes sure they turn out sociopathic. They breed it. They cultivate it. They educate it. <clears throat> and you know what? Before I started this, I realized we got a sociopathic government. You know, all that shit I heard when I was a kid about how bad the Soviets were and their spying and their electronic eavesdropping and all that shit that we were fingering them for? Why do we know that? Might it not be because our own government was doing it? Might it not be that our own government was so freaking corrupt, so controlled, so sociopathic that the evil ones who controlled it were using it or it became an extension of the egos and structure and the psyche of the evil ones? It became sociopathic in nature. So when I was told they had listening devices in the rooms over there and behind the Iron Curtain, and they had, uh, they eavesdropped on everything. The police were, were you know, everybody, the, the Stasi, the secret police. Folks, it dawns on me. <laughs> that was our own country. We ain't so good, folks. The people are good. How do, how can I say that? Look outside. Look at how peaceful it is. Now, I know I've heard about the riots in Philadelphia, you know, the lootings and all that crap. I know that it, the stuff is going on in other places. And I also know that the news is so controlled, they're not going to tell us the truth. They're just not going to do it. It's their nature. Well... The dog saw something. She's turning out to be a good companion. She's no great thing. I understand that. But she's really super loving. Really attached. And it's I mean, I I'm pretty happy with her, but it, it was a rough start and a rough go. My last dog was part Great Dane and part Black Lab and I I mean I found him and it was like I felt like an angel had tied him up to the bush there for me to find her. Wow. I mean, I was thankful for that dog. And I remember my dad telling me, take good care of that dog. You're going to, you know, you're going to be upset when he goes. And ah, I got him to 15 years, three months. Hmm. 15 years, used to be able to wrap this off three months a week and a day is what I think it was. Wow. 
That's a good life for any dog. What a great day. Whoa, baby. That's the way to go. And the brain on them is so massive. The personality is so magnificent. They really are king. They really are the, the leaders of the pack. Oh, and by the way, the dog had a spirit. Wasn't going to let anybody else bother him. I mean, he was fast. And he held his ground. Of course, he knew he had to. Other dogs aren't going to say, oh, okay, you give, we'll, we'll let you go. It's not happening like that, folks. People, people are really predatory. You think animals are predatory? You think animals are violent? What the hell do you think is going on on this planet today? Why do you think the world is the way it is? Seriously. <clears throat> Remember, I haven't been sleeping good. Remember, I've been... I haven't had any of my product, any of my, I guess I should call it a, my silver bullet. Yeah. I hope those people pay attention to the video that I made the other day. I hope they might listen to this one too. I'm going to send it over to them. I want to, I want the product. It's not expensive. It does so much good. Folks, I really love my friends. I can express my wild ideation, my creative putting together of these puzzles with them and they keep help me keep my head on straight and they listen to me but i i have to while i'm talking to them i have to say hey man that sounds crazy to me well there's some wild stuff going on yeah it's probably wilder than anything i can dream up which is kind of scary because i come up with some pretty wild stuff <clears throat> You're living in the police state. Remember those communists we heard about when we were growing up? Well, if you're my age, we certainly heard about them. <laughs> they were us. Yeah, they were us. And you know this thing about capitalism being bad? And look at these rich guys. And all their philandering, I want to say, but philanthropy. Kind of funny, isn't it? Because they do a lot of philandering too. They do the children and get away with it. Now, let's talk to the psychologist out there, especially the budding psychologist. You're not going to get this from the books. Freud worked with wealthy people. He also was Jewish, and he worked with Jewish people. And they were very wealthy. And he's in Vienna, which was like one of the gems of Europe. It was a nice place. And a lot of these wealthy people kept sending their daughters to him for therapy. Freud was pretty smart. He saw the patterns. He kept case notes. He kept real good details on this stuff. Remember, the devil is in the details. <laughs> he was seeing the patterns. All of these rich, beautiful women that were having problems, there was common thread in their lives. And he realized that if he kept writing his notes up the way he wrote them up with such detail, that they'd kill him. That's right, he stumbled into the into the rat's nest, the hornet's nest. He stumbled into the viper's nest, and he knew their secrets. And he knew, my God, if I allude even to this stuff, they'll kill me. So he knew he wasn't going to be able to survive unless he doctored up his notes. So he lied in the notes. He, And as a result, his... Mm. The thing he left behind 
can't access the word. I need my stuff. The thing he left behind. I want to say heritage. That's not the right, the, the right word. But his writings, his teachings and all that, they aren't quite as good as what he really learned and what he discovered. And what he found out was that these young women had been exploited when they were little girls. We're talking young girls, little girls, sexually by their fathers. <clears throat> In other words, it was the style. It was the lifestyle. It was what this culture did. It had to be kept secret. And these were wealthy, powerful men. They couldn't afford for it to get out there. They could afford to have people snuffed. Yep. Just like today, this government can afford to have anybody snuffed. You have a CIA operative asset, probably within a mile and a half of anyone. So if you get out of hand and they don't like what you're saying or doing, they can send over what they call an asset and dust your ass. And they're really good at making auto accidents, making things look like accident. Murderers and thieves rule my people. We have a problem. That tradition goes on today. Not only that, they've made real big businesses out of it. They've made merchandise. Yeah, the child sex trafficking. The stuff you can't talk about. Isn't that why they went after Russell Brand? Isn't that why they went after Jervis, I think his name was? The guy who made all those wonderful impromptu jokes for the Hollywood stars? Had them on the edge of the seats because they didn't know what was out of his mouth next. And he knew their secrets and he was alluding to them, calling them out. The crazy thing, he was kind of doing it in a loving fashion. A little bit of an affection to it. But he was calling them out because they were all sick fucks and he knew it. As a matter of fact, they were such assholes, he didn't want to be around them. Made him sick. Other people have gotten into the cause. They get killed. There's been a movie made recently. I haven't seen it yet. It's being suppressed. I think Mel Gibson was involved in the production of it, but the series may have been torpedoed. I don't trust anybody, even Mel. Freedom! Freedom to do what? To do little kids? Give me liberty. Please, Lord, give me liberty. Give me, give me liberty away from these jackasses and this bullshit that's going on. Oh, yeah, I hear my train of calling, that's for sure. I mean, I know I'll get to rest someday. All right, that's fine. I can wait. I do want you to buy my Bibles. It's the best Bible out there. Saw a cute young woman on Facebook. She had her she had her motto up there. She said uh, Bible thumper for whatever in such and such a place. And of course all the women well I do it too. I put up photos when I was younger look completely different. So she called herself a Bible thumper. That's her motto, you know. It's it's kind of precious. It caught my eye. I mean I it endeared me to her. And I had the perfect thing to toss out there. <clears throat> I sent a message saying, 
I'll thump your Bible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and of course, I mean, what's a young lady to do? You know, this guy is is bragging that you know she 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 holds herself out as a Bible thumper. And of course, my aunt was a Bible thumper, but she used it to beat other people up with. She used it to lord over people. And anyway, tell you about my aunt sometime, but not right now. So she responded, and I, I got her attention, you know? I mean, I, and I don't think she understood that my Bible outthumped her Bible. My Bible was better. I, that's, what, that's the gist of our conversation. And she was kind of arguing with me and it was kind of cute because she never really got it from what I could see. But I think she was starting to get it. And uh, what was nice is she told me she's, she'll be there all the time and maybe I've made another friend. Anyway. Uh, I really want you to buy my Bible because it is the best. 2,500 years ago, the Bible was altered by Ptolemy II, the Septuagint. Here we have my Septuagint, the 70th show. And the Bible that he produced was in Greek. There's a problem with these language folks. They use them to, to, uh, to enslave us here. And the old rulers in the Bible, you know, the old guys that we read about, what was the one thing that they could do? Languages. They could spew off the languages. Daniel, I guess he did a lot of languages. Moses, these guys had languages down. So they understood what the hell was going on. You and I don't have languages down. We're about as remote as we can be from it. Oh, and by the way, you know, we think that, wow, binary language, we had to have that. Man, it's so wonderful. We learned, we developed that. <laughs> Folks, we started with binary language on this planet. The oldest language is zeros and ones. The oldest language is a computer language. Look, I got a feeling it was a goddamn giant insect that, you know, that would rattle off clicks, you know, Zeros and ones in terms of that. That's what the language is like. Man, can you imagine hearing that stuff and understanding it? That's why I tell you, if you see a big, weird, ugly beast and he's, you know, making these clicks and other sounds, run like hell. I just looked at the night sky. It's cooling off a little nicer. Orion's up high in the sky. And I remember looking at it as a child. Why did I like Orion? Because the winter time was coming. The fall was coming. The hunt was coming. It was hunting season. I was going to go out with my dad and do some hunting. Oh, I, I'll tell you, I... Dad loved duck hunting. I wanted to do some other hunting. He wouldn't do it. Turned out he was pretty sensitive after all. He says, I don't want to hunt anything with bigger eyes than I have. So I think that some of my dad's hunting bothered him. So you have to remember, he was an officer in the army. He hung out with some badasses. And he was a badass. And he's really quiet about it. <clears throat> My mom wasn't so quiet about it. And I'm the one that got to hear the stories and remember the stories. Not even my brother gets that one. So I almost don't want to share with you just in case he's tuning in. Yeah, I'm upset with him. He's been putting a knife in my back every year I've been alive. Well, since he's been alive, very shrewd. Not a kind man, not a nice man, not a good man. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. I know what it says in the Bible, if you don't love your brother, or whatever this or that, then this or that, but we got to face the facts, folks. You know, we can only forgive so far. 
What am I going to do? Show up and turn my body sideways and say, here's my back. Have at it. Nah. The magic on this planet is so strong. The black magic, the sorcery. You need to understand it's being done to you physically and now electromagnetically. Some of it's nature because the magnetic field of the earth is diminishing. So even our own planet and the structure of this existence, this world, even that goes against us. Episodically, you will not live through another time like this. My God, you'd have to have a lifespan of probably 15,000 years to be able to, re to go through this, this particular period and point again. But you got to understand there are other creatures out there that have long lifespans. And a thousand years isn't that long. Certainly not to them. A thousand years was pretty long for man, but we were pretty close to that. We were living to be in the 900 years of age. Yeah. How old did Noah live to be? I think it was 600 years. I think the flood happened when he was 500 years old. How old did Adam get to be? I don't know off the top of my head. I'm sure I knew it at one point or thought about it or discovered it. But it says clearly in the book of Genesis, it says, Yahweh, God says, man's life shall be limited to 120 years. Okay, I can accept that. I'm not seeing much of it anyway. Are you out there seeing any of it? Man, I was in the assisted living home visiting my uncle and there was a woman there who was all dolled up. She had her makeup on. She was dressed up and uh, she was in a wheelchair. She had dyed her hair. She had makeup on her. You could tell she was used to taking really good care of herself. And she wanted me to dance with her in this I wish I had done it. Yeah, and my uncle was really upset with me for not doing it. But she was precious. And all I could think of is, I don't want her getting hurt. Not on my watch. You know, I mean, yeah. I'd like to get her out there and dance. Sure, it'd look awkward. So damn what? I mean, everybody there would have cheered. Did you know that she was 103 years old? Precious. We should have danced with her, given her that dance. But I just couldn't take the chance. I, it was my first time there. I wasn't that grounded in the situation. I didn't know what was acceptable. The staff there was wonderful. They treated these people with such dignity and respect. Wow. The staff there, I mean, they were warm. They were kind. They were attentive. Of course, I think it was the best assisted living facility in Dover. It sure was expensive. But you know, to have staff like that, that were so kind, and damn near doting on you. <clears throat> that was nice. The other claim to fame that this woman had was that she had skied every one of the ski resorts in Europe. I'm like, wow, did she hang out with the elite? Did she rub elbows with some rich and powerful and famous people? Because it takes big bucks to go skiing. <laughs> I loved skiing. <clears throat> Never looked at myself as being a rich man. Lift tickets were expensive. <clears throat> it was a pricey 
thing, but to get up on the mountain with that fresh air and get your heart going. And, and I did some crazy stuff up on the slope there, and I had a crazy friend, and I would follow him like a fool, and next thing I know is I'd be going straight up in the air and coming right down on my back. Uh, Frank, Frank had a spirit about him. Heck, I don't know if you know Mount Elieska, but it's, it's basically at sea level, and it goes up a couple thousand feet, and it's pretty sharp. And it's basically ice most of the time. It's not a real good ski resort in that aspect, but it's what we had. And, uh, man, we hit it with the powder a couple of times, and Frank liked to jump. Oh, my God, did he like to jump. And I mean, he just, uh, he had a spirit. Wasn't that big of a guy. Same size as I am. Pretty close. Man, he would get up there and do crazy stuff and I'd try to follow him. <clears throat> and I had a wild set of skis that had uh, releases on the bindings. They weren't mounted up properly and they about, about got hurt on them. So I remember that these were retractable bindings so you could pop the skis off and pop them on and keep going. The only problem is that a lot of times when those skis came off, you didn't want to keep going, but you did. So I ended up doing really weird shit because I was out of control. <laughs> I was doing flips and stuff. Yeah. I wasn't doing them under my control. Frank did it under his control. I didn't do it under my control. But, you know, we used to go off what's called Eagle Rock up there. And I tried out for the ski patrol. And, you know, as I'm going up there with these youngsters, I said, yeah, we used to go off that. And they're looking at me like, what? It's not allowed anymore. You can't do that. Of course, they didn't understand that it was powder snow. And we were going 200 feet through the, off that rock through the air. But And it was tough to hold on to your legs at the bottom. But there was powder snow. And you might drop your butt down into it and just, just get out of it using your legs as shock absorbers to take all that force. But we were going off Eagle Rock, by God. Oh, the ski patrol guys didn't believe me. Well... They had roped that off and banned that a long time ago. I guess they hadn't gone off that in years. And, of course, me having skied there as a little lad, they they didn't believe it. It's okay. And I did it a couple, three, four times. Oh, my God. Frank made me press myself. Anyway. What is it you really need to know? What is it you really need to understand? Well, what does I need to know? Look, the human mind is kind of an amazing thing. We get to be really creative with it. But you need to understand the magic, the black magic, the sorcery on the earth is powerful today. And so part of it are these potions, these magic potions, these medications. I hope I can explain this to you because I barely understand it. Ah, oh, what's his name told me about it? Turned out to be a jackass, so I stopped talking to him. I'm sorry, folks. You don't play head games with people at that level. Not if you're right. And I, uh, I didn't appreciate the head games. He was trying to play with me. Screw it. When they mapped out this body, when they dissected the, the big cat, the big animal, they used Latin. So all these parts in the body are all labeled in Latin. That's right, it's Latin. So a dead language is what they call it. I was deprived of learning Latin in ninth grade in Winthrop Junior High School in Winthrop, Massachusetts, which is basically at the end of the airport, Boston Airport. This flyover country for sure. I mean, the jets went over all the time. We were at the end of the runway. 
actually across the water from the end of the runway, so the jets were always going over us. Pretty low, pretty noisy. It must have impacted that place. It certainly was cheap, certainly was poor. And just to give you an example, <clears throat> there were four synagogues. Four. Four synagogues, right? There was a Catholic church, and there was another Catholic church, which we Protestants were allowed to share with and have services in. So, who was the minority? Who was the majority? How did they treat us when they were the majority? Not good. If you can detect the anger and rage inside of me, you'll know, not good at all. And they decided to discriminate against me. Of course, they didn't know who I was or what I was. I don't think they did. Their leaders might have, but these people are led by some horrible sons of a bitches. Anyway, I wasn't allowed to, in the Latin class. I tried to get in it. They kept insisting I learn Spanish or French. French, it was French. I didn't want to do either one of those two languages. I already been in a Spanish class. I didn't care much for it. Been in a French class. So friggin' what? I mean, it's French. I want Latin. Oh, no. That's getting people ready to go to med school. We can't have you going to med school. Our people go to med school. You don't go to med school. No, when our people go to law school, you don't go to law school. I never did get to study Latin. But if you're a youngster out there, well, if you're listening to me, you're not that young. But if you've got children, Latin's a good idea. Why? so you can understand what these sons of a bitches have been doing to us. Yeah, sons of a bitches, you heard me right. You know those medications, those marvelous miracle concoctions that they discover and patent and they get paid big royalties on? They make a lot of money on that shit. Yeah, the markup's like 10,000% on a lot of it. But in the hospital, they charge you 100, 150 for that Celine bag, and it cost them, what, 12 cents or something? Well, it cost them very little. All of the pharmacopoeia, all of the pharmacy, all of the sorcery is labeled in Greek. It's in Greek, folks, for a reason. It's Greek to me and to you. They don't want us knowing what they're doing to us. They don't want us to know their craft. They don't want us to know the pharmacopoeia, how they hurt us, poison us, damage us, and shorten our lives. They get away with it. They're licensed to do it. You and I can't do it. They got the license to practice. The license to kill. Another thing. The ingredients that are in any of these concoctions, that's actually even more important. And that's at a level that I don't quite understand. My buddy, previous friend, he had understand it. Yeah, Walt, he knows it. He understood it. Basically, there's something about the words, something about the psychic energies, something about the sources for those materials, also very important. 
in this giant spell doing, spell making, witchcraft, sorcery, black magic. And so you have to read the ingredients because some of those aren't approved for us. They aren't approved for you and I. And the bad guys know that. And they're smarter than we are. They've been educated in this stuff. A lot of them are dumbasses and don't know what the hell they're doing. They're just going with the flow because they were told this is the way we do things. You want to be one of us and get the big bucks and you want the paycheck. You want to have the class and all that shit. You do what we say. Or we take your license away. And your job and your money and your prestige and that ego of yours gets deflated pretty badly. Now, now that we've gotten to the word on the papers and all that, you know that physician's desk reference? You would think that, my God, the doctors write that up, right? No, they don't have anything to do with it. The medical doctors don't even write that stuff up. And the medical doctors aren't real doctors, folks. They're friggin' technicians. That's all they are. They're glorified whores, prostitutes. They work for big pharma. Yeah. Um, would that be for the horror of Babylon for you today? I didn't want to draw that illusion. Wasn't intending to get there, but we're here, folks. It's the flow of consciousness. Remember that. They put stuff in there, and they don't tell you. They hide it from us. <clears throat> Not only that, they don't diagnose us, and they certainly don't diagnose, don't, don't determine the cause. Not for us. For the animals, they determine the exact cause. Well, they get a hell of a lot closer, let's put it that way. And they treat that stuff, but in you or I, they're not allowed to even let you know what you really got. That's right purposeful will fill designed by John D. Rockefeller who came from a family named slightly differently than that and I don't remember the full name I've only read it once or twice it has two G's in the middle of it and it rhymes with Dragula Dragula get that folks Stays in the family. It's in the blood, in the DNA. All royalty in Europe claims to have come from Count Dracula. Vlad, the Impaler of Romania, who was a friggin' giant. And he didn't live in the remote past. His castle's still there today, along with his bed. Anybody out there, if you can get a picture of it and send it to me, I would really appreciate it. I had a picture of it. Yeah, I've been there. I saw it. The dude was fucking huge, man. You don't build a bed like that. Just a, well, it was a necessity to have a bed like that. The room was really grand. The old castle was tucked away in the hills of Transylvania. The trees were weird. The land was weird. The river, it's a tight little hills and rivulets and we went there in the winter time in a bus it was eerie i'm sure it's beautiful in the summer you know the deciduous trees had lost their leaves but i'm sure that in the summertime it was just lush and beautiful vlad the impaler was able to withstand the uh, byzantine empire invading him He did some psychological warfare himself. So let's talk about the sorceries, the real sorceries that are going on. Now that you've got all of that stuff, and I just put it in the realm that you're used to. You're not used to hearing about the subtle energy in the bodies, the aura, the different layers, the magnetic field, the currents that are going in your body. You're not used to knowing about that, but they're using all of that shit. Because you're powering, you're powering their fucking beast system, their fucking monster, man. Your body 
literally is powering their stuff. Yeah, you develop a, you develop your own electromagnetic field. Yeah, you do. <clears throat> so a woman out there, she's kind of weird chick, but she's doing her best to educate people. So she's uncouth like I am. She's real direct. She's a middle-aged woman. Nothing special about her except she was put in the right places at the right time. And she knows her stuff. And she'll tell you how you're part of their Wi-Fi and their cell phone system and all that shit. And I sit there going, oh, my God, you got to be kidding me. It's hard for me to understand what she's trying to tell me. She put out two videos making it as easy as she could. Pretty brave woman. Your magic comes out of the old wand. And what was the wand made out of? What was that little stick made out of that they cast all those spells with? Come on, folks. What kind of wood was it made out of? You ain't that dumb. You ain't that daft. What's that sign up in the hills over L.A.? And who founded Hollywood? Who owns Hollywood? And the Creative Artists Association. Ooh, might it also be our CIA? Or does the Creative Artists Association own parts of the CIA? Which way is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. All I know is when you do the history of Hollywood, you will see a particular group gravitating towards it. And those people are casting spells on you and me every day. They do it in the nightly news all the time. They really got us mesmerized with that bullshit. Folks, Pharmacopoeia, sorceries, refers to both the physical poisoning and the psychological brainwashing. We are marvelous creatures. We are. I'm not sure if we're supposed to be evolving at this particular period in history and we're just having growing pains. It's almost a comforting way to think of it, except growing pains were a bitch when I was growing up. It hurt like crazy, especially at night in my legs. Wow. But then again, the food supply, what they were putting into the stuff and what they weren't allowing into it, that might have been having an effect. Might have been causing the pain. The leg cramps for lack of particular necessary nutrients. And then they added shit to our food all the time. What a wonderful industrial age where you mass process foods and you got solvents you're cleaning your machinery up with and it gets in there and it accumulates. A lot of this stuff they're putting in there accumulates in the body over time. Some of it they put in there by mistake, but most of it they know exactly what they're doing. Yep, that's right. They're poisoning us on purpose. They've been doing it for a while. They've had a history of doing it for a few centuries at this point. I forget. I'd have to go back. I threw out so many books. I had to. But I'll tell you, some of the books actually had the histories of the conspiracies on different peoples, different continents. So here we've arrived kind of at the culmination of having poisoned minds, souls poisoned, don't think I, bodies poisoned. And so most of you got parasites and heavy metals and all kinds of toxicity and uh, fungal 
um, and other kinds of uh, infections, uh, but they won't tell you that and they won't treat it. Instead, what they do is they lie to you. They come up with a system whereby they go after the symptoms and then they name the symptoms a disease. So you would never figure out, I got fucking worms I got to get rid of. You know, like we deworm the dogs and shit like that. Or I got, you know, whatever it is. A parasite, another kind. What? In other words, it's a fucking bunch of liars and thieves. That's your medical profession today. And they work with big, pharma, with big pharma and they work with the insurance companies. They write up the damn reports so that they obscure them so that they don't have to pay out on insurance claims. Certainly not as much when you're older. They write all this shit down and they discredit you because that's their job. MDs, liars and thieves. You can tell I'm kind of pissed off about them. They lied in my medical records, didn't tell the truth, and I got I got shorted real bad. I'm still pissed. I'm not giving up on it. And they don't tell us the truth about what's in their treatments and what they're doing. They don't tell the truth hardly at all. It's a profession. And Abraham Lincoln said some profound things. The professions are turned against the laity. P for profession, P for predator. And I was a member of that class. So don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Many times I wish I didn't know what I know. It's a hell of a weight with the emphasis on hell. Welcome to it, folks. Some of my brothers will say, this is hell. This is the worst it's ever going to be. Well, they don't understand <laughs> what's coming. They don't understand what's next. I don't even know exactly what's next, but, you know, I'm trying to live in the spirit. I'm trying to live in the day. I'm trying to enjoy the numbers of revolutions that I have around our sun and this little space around the galaxy I get to take, this short little ride. Uh, if you want your nation back, you know, the Republic, which most of us don't remember because we didn't live in it. We lived on the tailings of it as they gave us a different country, a different government, and took our asses over. Yeah. You want to know who the enemy is? You don't have to go very far. You want to know a nice way to deal with them? Don't play the game. Don't walk down that street again. Don't go down that street. You know there's a big pothole in there. And you've fallen in it many times before. You don't need to do that. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Well, not entirely. What you can do is you can ignore these corporate governments that we have that are not organic governments. They're not really our legitimate governments. Same with the courts. They're not our courts. They're not legitimate courts. You can ignore them. And you can take counsel among yourselves. And you can form, what do they call that? That court. Oh, boy. <laughs> Grand juries. And you can bring charges against these son of a bitches on your own. And then hopefully you can get your neighbors to band together and create and actually vote people into those seats of the government which our founders gave us. The one they created for us. They crafted that son of a bitch up and wrote it so nicely. 
that these guys can't break it, not completely and not quite in time. Just in time. Like they deliver the blows in California just in time so they can have a fire sale on that property because they want to build a high-speed rail just in time. That goes nowhere. Just another boondoggle to put big money in our leaders, crooked leaders' pockets and everybody else's pockets. It's a big racket. It's all rigged. The rigging can happen on the stage. The rigging can happen on a ship. The rigging can happen where else? <laughs> I got to be careful, right? That's dangerous territory, Dr. Kid. You can't talk about that because if voting really made a difference, then they wouldn't allow us to do it. <laughs> yeah. I thought that Kathy Hobbs was resigning the governorship, and I figured, oh, my God, they must be ready to convict her ass finally. Then I find out it was a, it was false. It wasn't true. It's amazing how they test the waters on us all the time. You see, half your psychologists and half your psychiatrists are working behind the scenes against you. That's right. Half of them are working for the government managing the plantation. Folks, I just looked at the time and I'm over an hour. I hope you got something out of this video. Pray for each other. Pray for the nation. Pray for forgiveness. Pray for help in repentance. And go gentle on yourself, especially when your sins are brought up in front of your own eyes, that you don't just condemn yourself on the spot. You're learning. You're growing. You're handed a bunch of shit. And you have to turn it into something nutritious for you. Remember, character building really works. Those laws of nature, natural law, the Ten Commandments in the Bible, really work. Follow them. And if you notice something goes better, dwell on it. Be grateful for it. My God, we make so many stupid mistakes and we go, don't get to learn. I didn't like Walt Walton much, but he had one good adage. He says, a man needs two lives. One to learn by and the other one to live. Sadly, we're tossed out here learning and living at the same damn time. Oh, man, look at that magnificent forehead. I guess the fellow bugs would be proud of all that. Huh? When you work hard, you use your frontalis muscle, and she gets wrinkled up. And you ladies want to be professionals and work hard and get wrinkled up, huh? <laughs> uh, enjoy the day, folks. Enjoy your food and your drink. Enjoy what you see. Enjoy the peace that you're having at the moment. If you've got the shower up and refresh yourself, some grooming, and you're all primed up like a peacock, be glad. Strut about and enjoy. Feel good about yourself. It doesn't last very long. And whatever you do, go a little gentle on yourself and on others. Because the shields on this planet are coming down. The magnetic field is diminishing. And we are vulnerable. And the earth grows during these periods. The mass enlarges physically. And she changes. And sadly, it ain't always gentle birth pains, labor. You ladies know about that stuff. We men, we're grateful for you for what you do. You give us children. Yahweh bless.